Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. So first of all, thank you. Thank you, Alec. Thanks to Nemoir. Thanks to IME for inviting Trade and Technologies today. It's really appreciated. Um, and just by way of introduction, uh, I have my colleague, Chris John, who's going to talk to you about options and what we can support on our options functionality. Um, and myself, Mark Potter, will talk through some of the tra trading opportunities that we've seen. And we have people that are interested in the tools that we have um, to, to trade. And then that's sort of really related to, I guess, the relative value or arbitrage trading. Um, to kick off, we've got a short presentation Inspector, in respect to some slides. Won't keep it too long, but I think the interest will be in a demonstration of the actual platform itself and, and some of the things that you'll be able to do. So just for those that have joined and are not too familiar with TT, a little couple of slides just on about who we are and what we do. Um, so kicking straight off is Trade Technologies. We are a software developer. We're a technology provider to the industry. And our core business is software services within the listed derivative space. We've been doing that for 25 years. Um, we are a global company. As you can see, we've got offices across Asia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Sydney, Tokyo, and then we span to the US and then down into Southern Americas and then back into Europe um, and obviously India part of Asia. Currently, we provide access to over 50 global derivatives exchanges. And then on top of that, we do actually now offer access to crypto, but um, something we're happy to talk about another time. Our customer base is traditionally what we call professional traders. So it has been the professional proprietary traders the, uh, I guess, hedge funds, systematic funds, global macro funds, but and then down into individual companies. But we have a large client base of the commodity trading houses. So obviously having now access to China is going to be of main interest to those that want to trade the commodity products and, and the opportunities between, I guess, Chinese products and those for international markets. Um, as Services specialise, we said, in listed derivatives, but in market connectivity, providing access to the market in the actual trading GUI, the screen, and we'll show you that in a second. But coupled with that is our algorithmic trading capabilities, some of the tools that we can offer to, to yourselves to use to, to enhance your trading capabilities. Um, APIs, order management systems, market surveillance, data and hosting. So wide range of services, but all centered around the futures and options markets. So just to show you, so this is a current list of our markets, but obviously highlighted today, we've got access to IME, but obviously just to mention China as a whole, we've got Dalian and Zhengzhou. But I highlighted in yellow there, there are other markets that list currently complementary products as such that one might trade arbitrage opportunities against. For example, Bursa, you've got Palm, palm oil but if you look to INE we've got CME for NYMEX crude we've got access to DME so you've obviously got the Dubai crude we've got access to ice for Brent crude um, and even like to consider other things like rubber we have access to what is JPX I've got highlighted here basically is TOCOM iron ore is, is Singapore so there's a number of different exchanges and actually just one to mention more recently we added Moscow and they have a crude contract to put and in some of the context I've said earlier, we have access to those other exchanges to trade arbitrage opportunities. So accessing China through Nanhua. Um, so TT, beginning of this year, finally up and running with our access to i &E, um, and working with partners like uh, Nanhua to be able to bring, bring access to that market. Um, so there are a couple of nuances in respect to, to trading with China, and I'll sort of run through them. First off, we have access through TT's built on a backbone of 13 data centers that span globally and circumvent literally the, the world um, where you can access from the US or from Asia or from Europe, but you use that backbone and network to actually get access into China. So you can trade all Chinese exchanges, i.e. via the TT platform or using its API services and you access through your local data center. And I'll just show you that, that this is a map. So currently Shanghai, we have a link from Hong Kong, redundant circuits up into Shanghai. So wherever you are located in the world, you can access through one of these data centers noted here. Um, and I'm happy to maybe share that map of people that have, have got interest. Um, 
I said connectivity is through to Shushun, which is a data center in Shanghai, where TT have to connect to the servers of Nanhua. So um, unlike most international exchanges where our system would typically have run connectivity into an exchange, the rules and regulations say that we have to connect to the broker systems and the brokers manage those connections to the exchange. So we connect directly to Nanhua through that connectivity that I showed. The solution is supporting all internationalized futures products and then other complementary options that are now being launched. But specifically in relation to IE, we're now obviously supporting the crude oil. But just to note some of those other ones low sulfur fuel, copper, rubber, and, and we said the options. And they say they're all present, potentially present, I guess, arbitrage opportunities. Um, Chris is going to go through our options functionality, but TT built within our platform have a options sort of suite of, of different products designed with options pricing modeling and everything that will be able to be used if you're trading INE options. Um, and as we mentioned, some of those nuances, TT is now supporting all the required, what we call order flags. So again, most international exchanges are not required to designate an opening or closing order, but for INE you do. And there are other specific trades or, or flags that you need to assigned to a trade as to the type of trade so they're all supported now within the platform um but key here i think is all the things that tt has been known and renowned for our spreading tool which we'll chat about adl other things they are all available and support trading into the chinese futures and options markets and products so just to move on mention that oh, excuse me so auto spread up so this is what we were sort of going to show in a, in a moment, which is our spreading tool, which is specifically designed for relative value arbitrage trading. Um, it supports the creation of what we call multi-legged strategies. So whilst you might think most arbitrage opportunities relate to two products, you know, let's say uh, iron e crude against NYMEX crude or ice Brent, you can, if you are willing to combine those to create multiple leg strategies. So TT can support more than I think 10 or 20 different legs in a single strategy. Um, so you can be a lot more flexible in respect to how you're looking at those arbitrages. Um, we call it proactive, a proactive spreading tool, which means it actually places orders in the marketplace. And those active orders will adjust themselves based on the price movements of the other contracts you have configured in your, your spread strategy. Now, I will note with China, there are some limitations in respect to what we call quoting on exchange. There's a restriction on the number of order messages that you are allowed to make in a single day on your account. But TT within the auto spreader, and I will show this, that you can avoid the quotations on the Chinese exchange are on INE and manage those orders through other exchanges. Um, obviously, the system designed to automatically hedge, so therefore you're quoting for one product and upon a uh, partial or fulfill, we will automatically hedge into the other market or markets that you have in your strategy. Um, the system's also built, obviously these strategies, these arbitrage strategies are synthetic you know, whilst you can guarantee a fill in terms of quantity, you can't always guarantee the prices or fluctuations or movements in the markets, but our system is um, designed to actually include a, a, a set of rules that you can build and use, which will allow you to create your own set of controls to limit any risk that you may have in terms of the, the trading behavior of the system. And a key thing to note here is, none of this is working from your desktop. There's still a lot of spreading and arbitrage systems that are running admittedly from your desktop, from your the laptop that you're using. TTs are all server-based, which means if you are looking to trade i and &E CME ARB, you can quote orders co-located at the CME exchange, despite you being based here in Asia, be it in China, be it wherever you might be located. Um, and those field orders generally will go to generate the hedging orders directly, which would be sent across our network back into China. Same thing, if you wanted to work rubber arbitrage, we have servers based here co-located with the exchange in Singapore or even in, uh, in Japan, 
in Tokyo if you wanted to trade iron ore, same thing here. So again, you can take advantage, they're readily available, all servers are available to all traders if you're using their tools. Um, and just to complement auto spreader, I mean, I'm not going to present this today, but TT has sort of one step up, something called Algo Design Lab. So for those traders looking to enhance, let's say their trading strategy as a whole, ADL, um, as we, we know it, is a visual programming interface. So you're not needing to be a coder, be able to have to write code. Um, you can effectively feel, uh, use a drag and drop sort of function to build a trading strategy. You can test those strategies within the system and then you deploy the strategy that you built. It's a code compiler. So you can actually deploy those to those same co-located servers that I mentioned that Autospreader runs on. Um, and again, you've got access to send these to Singapore, to Tokyo, to the US to run those strategies. The core thing with this worth mentioning is if you have an arbitrage strategy that you want to automate, this is what ADL will allow you to do. You can fully automate, use technical analytics and other functions to automate the entry and exit process of your, let's say your arbitrage or spread strategy. So you're going from, let's say, manual trading with an automated function to generating a fully automated trading strategy. So that's just, uh, I guess, the, the slides I was going to go through. I'll let Chris take over on what will be options. But just before Chris does, I'll just give you a, a run through of auto spreader. Just ask Chris, can you see my training screen? Yeah. Not yet. Let me just stop sharing for one second, if I may. Share screen. All right, hopefully everyone can see the screen. So I'm just going to start off, just go back one. So this is, uh, I say, TT's interface. I'm not going to go through all the details today, but just to give you the basics on a trading screen that most of you will be familiar with, is his uh, iron ease crude oil prices, obviously based in Ramimbi. TT has a charting application built in the system so you can do your technical analytics around the standard prices, et cetera. And then we've got our order book. But I just wanted to show you just as a proof of concept of what I mentioned, this is a sort of standard order ticket. Here are these open and close flags that I mentioned that are relevant to INE. And then secondly, the, the different trade types that you might execute. So those are required when you're submitting orders, just to show that TT is supporting those. Um, so just to move over to the spread trading, because this is what we wanted to show. So just to kick off, I just want to show you the, I guess, the configuration of what we would set up in our auto spread at all. So if I look at one I did earlier, so this is just creating arbitrage between iron e crude and i'm using ice crude a big on uh, nymex crude but obviously you can use ice brent or dme so you, you can add the con contracts note this leg three here this is actually a singapore cnh us dollar currency conversion so obviously one's going to be priced in obviously iron e is going to be priced in remimbi uh, crude on NYMEX is going to be priced in dollars. So we need to have to factor in that price conversion. We'll allow you to actually do your own preference. So there's a calculation on the formula that you can see in this line here that I highlight, which is basically just using that those values and how you want to determine your, your arbitrage price. So in this case, I'm dividing the INE price by the currency future, which is going to price my ARB in dollars. Obviously, if you want to change that round, you change the formula to represent multiplying dollars by CNH to get the, the Remindy price. Um, so just to run through a couple of the points that I made earlier. In TT, the contracts that you have, so iron e crude, the volume ratios. Well, in this instance, the ratios, the volumes that you want to buy and sell are equal. So buying one on I and E represents negative one, which is the equivalent of what we determine as a sell. And therefore I'm pricing this ARB as if I'm buying the ARB, I'm buying I and E, I'm selling NYMEX crude. Um, the pricing is one minus one, but as I said, I've done this custom pricing factoring in the, the currency future. Now, admittedly, we're not hedging on the currency future um, because the notional value of a futures contract is typically, I think, 100,000 underlying of the 
the actual um, currency, and that doesn't necessarily equate to the, let's say, the, the notional value of the trades that you might do. So there are ways that I'm happy to talk to another time about details of how if you wanted to use currency futures, but at this point, you're just using them from a pricing perspective. Um, despite us buying this ARB and therefore buying China, selling the US, I'm going to work my orders, these active quotes, on the CME. I've said this because we can't do the quoting, we can't manage quoting on, on IME because of the quote restrictions. So whilst I might be buying IME to sell crude, I'm actually going to offer into the CME market. And once that offer gets lifted, I would then look to buy the IME. And again, that's not necessarily because of liquidity. Other ARBs you might do that. That typically you would quote the less liquid market to hedge into the liquid market. But in this instance, we are saying that this is to do with quote restrictions, that you are not going to quote orders continuously on IE. Um, and I mentioned these rules. So again, I won't go into detail today, but happy to cover this individually with anyone who'd like to know more. Um, TT have built a set number of rules which will manage your quoting of orders and manage the hedging of orders as and when required based on market dynamics. So TT, you set these parameters, define which order you want to hedge, which order you want to quote, or you can be very aggressive where circumstances allow and quote across all markets. So you are really being aggressive in your approach. Once we've done, we can launch this view. Traditional view would be, let's say a market grid. So here's my ARB that I'm quoting side by side prices. Okay, and then you can enter your orders in a standard perspective that you would normally use. For today, I wanted to show it in what we call MD Trader. And just as a very quick sort of demonstration of how this works, it's a vertical display of prices. I'm sure most of you will know or have seen this, but the, for those who may not, um, the blue column represents buy, red column represents sell. These are the volumes. So the market is currently 70 bid for four contracts. 10 lots offered at 71. And as a visual reference, the market physically moves up or down based on price movements. And then with TT, if you want to place a buy order, you specify your volume from the volume numbers and then just click on the blue column to place a buy order. That's me working one or in the red column above the market to place a sell order. And that's my seller in the market. And if I just want to change the price, I can drag and drop these orders around and then to cancel them, I just click on them. Now, if I want to lift the market, so if I want to buy one lot, I've got my volume specified, 72. I'm just filled instantly at 72. So you'll see my position here if I buy another one lot. My position is reflecting two. So that's just to show you the workings of those orders. Now, in that configuration of the spread, and beg your pardon, so here for I and E, this is crude. Now, at the moment, TT price fees from INE and other Chinese exchanges typically level one. Um, I understand there is a level two feed, feed that's now recently been available, and obviously TT is going to be looked at adding that. But as of today, for demonstration purposes, just showing you level one, the best bid and ask in the market. So, but we can still place orders in the market using our MD trader the same as you can with any other market. The functionality remains the same. And then simultaneously with the arbitrage, so this is this synthetic product that I've made, we can do the same thing. Now, if you recall that configuration I made, if I want to buy the ARB, I'm buying INE, selling 9X crude. But my active order was or is going to quote on, uh, on CME IMEX. So if I just as an example start with a place of one lot at negative 160, you'll see this offer appear in CME. Now that 83 offer is actually priced against the 399 spot four price. And if that was co um, converted back through that currency future on SGX that I'm using, that would equate that if I could sell at 83, I can lift the offer at 399 spot four. So that's the principle, that's that active quote. So as I move my, my our border closer to the market, you'll see that quote come down accordingly based on what it's now offering. So as I get right to negative 148, 
directly the offer, I'm offering 71 still to be able to lift that, that point four offer. And just to show you on the offer side, if I want to offer one lot in the ARB, I went to 140. I'm working my bid now. So I'm still buying, buying China, selling the US, working a bid on the US market on CME to then effectively sell the 399 spot two price. So exactly um, in the same principle, but in a different direction. Now, just to show you, you in our order book, what you can see to the right, we actually provide and give you a synthetic ARB order. So you can see that order itself, and I can manually go into my order book and adjust the price of my ARB just by adjusting the price and hinge change. So you're getting one, a synthetic order, but two linked to that, you can see this active quote underneath. So one thing to note, obviously not everybody wants to be trading in, in one lot, so I'm sure everyone, you know, number of traders will do larger size. Two options here. Reload is effectively an iceberg order for trading arbitrage. So I want to do 100 lots, but I don't want to show that volume to the market. So if I go in, go negative 155, I'll work 100 in total, but I'm only showing it in clips of one to the market. Now, if I get filled in that one lot, I'll submit another quote. So you can't build up a position on one side. You can't just get filled on NYMEX and with no execution back into INE. The system is designed that it will actually wait until you fulfill that minimum order quantity to the ratio you require one to one before submitting another quote back into NYMEX. So those are some of the controls that we mentioned. Um, so let me just bring that closer to the mark. See if I can get some feels for everyone. Well, that's the at least where I can't force the market to trade. So what I'm doing, just so you can see the fill, um, show my order book. If I just go into the market on a one lot and I can buy the offer, literally, and therefore just to show you that fill, filled orders. Here's my uh, this is the arb trade that I made. So literally bought and sold one, bought the ARB at 145, which was the offer price at the time. And then there's my fill. And if you calculated through that currency, now obviously we're not using the currency future to hedge if you require, but that's the buy and selling linked together. So I can wrap that up if you want to see the detail. You can obviously within TT monitor your positions in P&L by highlighting that. And that's my ARB trade that I've got on. So, that's the principle of how TT's ARB works, say server-based. There are a couple of other nuances that I'd just like to show. Um, so this is just like, you know, within TT, you can have different views for different things, but this may be of interest to, to everybody. Firstly, there are, that I'm aware, no calendar spreads or butterflies that are listed for I and E. Um, so if you want to trade, you know, what's deck deck or what's, you know, June SEP, any considerations for trading spreads between different expiry months that you're accustomed to on international exchanges. But TT's auto spreader, you can still facilitate the same thing by using the spreading tool to execute calendar spreads. But so in this instance, I created, uh, just expand that. I created, here we go, um, Oknov, just one. So this is the one here, so it's a calendar spread. And if you look at November, do bid ask. So bid to ask is 0.7, ask to bid is 0.2. So we're implying the calendar spread for you. But what's of interest here is obviously that's just one calendar month or one calendar spread. If I want to look at, if I want to look at the whole curve, we can auto generate through a spread matrix. So what TT is doing here is we've calculated the implied across every calendar spread permutation that will be available through those individual expiry months. And then again, you can literally trade, I can click on and we can trade in the same sort of standard fashion. You don't have to create all the, all the sequences that you require you can just actually um, automatically create the ones that, you know, it will do, do every, every permutation. And you can filter down if you don't want to see everyone. Um, and then one final point to note, 
similarly as I did with that, if I looked at um, the spread matrix for Canada spreads, this is a crude contract and the same thing. This is the uh, INE crude against NYMEX crude. And rather having to create every single permutation, we create one and we can launch as this matrix. Um, and once we've done that as a matrix, we can obviously have ability to access and trade the same functions. And then if I just want to select, let's say set or if this to October, whichever product, again, probably a slightly delay where I'm working from home, but be able to chart everything, be able to trade everything. So again, just different ways that you can use. And the final point mentioned butterflies for those that might want to trade flies, you know, three months, October, November, December, deck, 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 those combinations, same principle. There are no calendar spreads. So you're not trading, you know, set deck against deck March, but you can implement, you know, September, or in my case, bigger pardon, October, November, December, three outright months. And we reconfigure the, 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 the middle month that, you know, the middle month of yours fly to be a volume of two. So again, don't think of auto spreader just for trading arbitrage. You can utilize it for other strategies within a single product as well. So from that, um, I will now, if I may, pass over to Chris um, and he'll give you an insight into our, our options.